What is up guys, Politics Gaming here, and today we are doing a brand new episode of the Federative Republic of Brazil. This is episode three. Essentially, last time we had to start over, um, and we are on our way to uh, making Brazil a better place. This is going to be more of a foreign policy episode in which we are going to be negotiating trade deals with other nations. We're going to uh, start increasing our influence. We're going to start uh, the groundwork of uh, uh, setting up operations in South America. We're going to get um, all countries within South America to be aligned with Brazil as well we are going to increase relations with the United States as well as possibly Russia. I mean, you know, we are a very uh, special, we are a very special country in terms of geopolitics in which Brazil does not necessarily lean toward the East or the West. So Brazil actually kind of sits in the middle. They are actually a part of an organization called BRICS. So this BRICS organization is a, uh, a economic political organization that comprises of Brazil, South America or South Africa, uh, China, Russia, uh, and India. And uh, it's also a part of the non-aligned. I think it was a, a part of the non-aligned movement during the Cold War. I may be wrong on that. Gabe Vogel, if you're watching this, go ahead and correct me. Um, but we're going to start increasing relations with some Middle Eastern countries. We're going to start getting our oil supply secured as well. We are going to um, start the process of increasing our relations with the United States. We're going to start up some uh, student exchange programs across uh, uh, the Americas. And uh, we're generally going to increase our influence. So this is from Michael. Uh, this He says, FYI, real is pronounced like hey all. That is the singular term. And the plural is, is pronounced hey ice. So um, that is essentially... Um, one way to pronounce it, I, if I'm saying that correctly, thank you, Michael, so much for saying that. And he says Brazilians left their R in Europe and replaced it with an H. So again, the singular is hail and the plural is heis. 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 I'm going to say heis. And hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Uh, I love I love playing these uh, these countries in which, you know, oh, yeah, hey, uh, he doesn't know how to pronounce some of these things, and it's just funny seeing an American say it. So the main goal right now is to make sure that our economy is stable. We're going to use a little bit of time to uh, kind of stabilize our economy. One of the big changes that they actually made in the uh, 6.82 update is that now our economy can finance its own debt. So a lot of the uh, smaller countries, you actually were not able to finance your own debt. You would have to actually rely on a lot of foreign debt in order to keep your country operating. And now with this new update that your country does now start financing its own national debt in which you now have to rely less on international creditors and their interest rates whenever, whenever a recession pops up or anything like that. Now, um, what we can do is we're going to start focusing on energy and we're going to also uh, go through and see what types of economic sectors we can start to look at. And I think I won't, you know, bore you guys with uh, the specifics, but I will give you guys kind of a rundown of what I do in the background. And whenever I do skip, that way you go and, uh, you know, back in the back in the good old days of politics gaming, um, I actually... Uh, would do everything in front of you guys, um, but I'm not going to bore you guys with that. That way these episodes are a little bit shorter, but these episodes are pretty popular. I've gotten over 2,000 views on each video. Um, the first episode got like about 1.6 thousand. The second episode got like two, nearly 3,000 video uh, views. And a lot of their recent videos that I made do actually perform very well. And hopefully this video does perform well. I have been gone for a little bit and I hope that this video does do the same numbers that it was doing before. And then therefore, you know, I'm still popping up in the algorithm for you guys. Um, so if you guys have not uh, seen me before, if you guys are new to this channel, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. I love to see the interaction you guys have with these videos. And if you guys wanna see more, again, leaving a like and commenting down below what your thoughts are. Um, always helps and tells me that you guys want to see more. So please go ahead and do that for me. 
Um, we're gonna see, yeah, we're gonna hold back on increasing our uh, secret services, but this will be at full funding when, uh, whenever we are financially going to be able to do that. Um, that is the goal. Um, but can we increase the amount of uh, special international agents? We actually can, so we're gonna do that. And manage networks, we're gonna see, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of all of the countries that we don't want uh, troops in. So we're gonna say Thailand, we don't care about Spain, Germany, uh, China, not even, Taiwan, France, um, India, India, no, Russia, no, Egypt, no, Nigeria, no, Sweden, Arab, uh, Norway, Pakistan, Iran, yeah, we don't, we don't need those troops anywhere. Um, and then we're gonna open them inter uh, uh, specifically across all of South America, and we're gonna start doing, collecting information on our neighbors, um, in which, you know, we can start getting uh, leaders deposed. We're gonna start mainly uh, financing political parties that are closer to us ideologically, and then we will be able to uh, start growing our influence and signing security packs uh, with our neighbors. And then hopefully in the future, we will be able to uh, sign some sort of political military organization that encompasses South America, be essentially like NATO, be like NATO, except it would be along South American lines with Brazil at the head of this organization. And in our military, we have a conscript army of 246,000 conscripts with 66,000 uh, 67,000 career soldiers, essentially. Um, and that totals around for uh, 313,000 uh, total uh, land soldiers. And then we have 1.34 million people in reserves. We need to start increasing our commando count and we can start paying these uh, people more money um, once our economy really starts to take off. And I believe our economy could, should be able to take off. Um, I think what we are going to do is... Uh, we are going to f uh, find someone to sign a free trade agreement with. Um, so this is going to be first order of business uh, for this episode. And we're going to go over to the United Kingdom. We're going to go over to free trade agreement. And we are going to... Um, we're going to sign a reciprocal commercial contract with the United Kingdom. And we are going to see how they re uh, react to that. Because I believe that if we go over to farming... Uh, we go over to here and we will see agricultural. We need to get that up to 1.5%. Um, so we need to knock these up to about five stars. We will not be able to afford that as, as of yet. Um, if we get that up to 1.5%, uh, that will allow us to, um, that will allow us to sign global economic treaties and therefore our trade would be more beneficial to a lot of other countries. So um, we can look at the United Kingdom. We could also look at India for a free trade agreement, possibly also Japan, and especially the United States would be um, a very preferable uh, trade partner for a free trade agreement. Although and as of right now, the United Kingdom has accepted our proposal of a free trade agreement. Now, now this free trade agreement between the Federative Republic of Brazil and the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland uh, have now signed a reciprocal commercial contract. Uh, the affected sectors are limited to a portion of the partner's dominant sectors. So therefore, I'll show you guys what the dominant sectors are, at least on our side. Um, tariffs between the two nations have been reduced by 50%. The control of the goods at the border are now light. And regulations are um, not in effect right now. And that will not, be, uh, that will not uh, matter until we uh, upgrade this to a... Uh, a, a global economic treaty. So, um, says so termination date 2028. That will not matter. It does not really have a uh, termination date unless you know our relations really, really start to tank or we go to war with each other. Um, so we don't really need to worry about it expiring. So let's go over to diplomacy, and we do see that this contract is a 231 billion dollar contract. So it's pretty, pretty sizable contract now. Um, another change that they actually made in 6.82 is that uh, 
um, instead of, you know, the hyper growth that we would see whenever we would si sign these free trade agreements, you know, I would see like 10, 20% growth as the United States was pretty unrealistic. Um, I, I, now you actually have pretty uh, solid growth, you know, over time instead of the just like in it, because the originally it was actually kind of contained to one year, you would get all that growth in one year. Um, but now they actually kind of extended that beyond one year. So, um, again, in my opinion, these updates, like every time they make a new update, especially since the 2020 edition, I have been really liking a lot of uh, the direction that they have been going in. So if you guys have not gotten the 2022 edition, go ahead and try it out. I would do, I would definitely recommend this one. Um, uh, we have a new message, disturbing budget deficit. I must deficit. confess to you that the current level of our budget deficit is not at all reassuring. It weakens our economy while continuously creating more debts. The interest on which we will have to pay. Yeah, so we do not want to worry about the this uh, this higher debt rating that we're trying to pay. That's why we're trying to lower our deficit. We need to cut it in half, um, at least. We need to lower this to about 3%. That would be a much preferable um, uh, budget deficit. So I would say, let's uh, we need to find at least three to 400 billion uh, hells um uh worth of uh or high ice high ice um we need to find three to four hundred billion high ice in order to start lowering this deficit we have a uh, 3.6 trillion high ice of revenues and uh 4.2 trillion high ice of expenditures so we do see that we are spending 276 billion on debt reimbursement um i'm not thinking about cutting defense spending yet um, education. Wow, we are spending 1.1 trillion hayes on uh, on education. And how, what about? Let me go ahead and look. How much are we spending on? There's unemployment insurance, the treasury, uh, 150 billion on uh, justice. What about? We got foreign affairs, health. Look at that, 100 billion exactly on health, but we're spending 1.1 trillion on education. What is going into education? Let's look. 1.13 trillion dollars. We spend a lot on education. Wow. Number of higher education students over a million. We'll put a million near two million uh, in higher education, and we have a pretty sizable uh, education field. Um. I think what we're going to do, we're going to go over to the United States, we're going to go over to Actions, and we're going to go over to Foreign Exchange Students. We're going to ex uh, suggest a foreign exchange program between our two nations, and they have refused it. So they say, um, even if travel does broaden the mind, the gains for our youth would be much less within a country that has a comparable education system. And commercial response for our... Uh, uh, um, commercial response for our energy grid and um let's go over to taxation let's really take a look at this um what is our growth rate right now we need to look at our growth rate 4.19 percent and we are still increasing the financial transaction tax um i don't want to increase the value added tax because we're not really dealing with the growth issue yet let's lower the uh company tax that will it This year, we have been fighting against the record melting of ice caps during the summer. Prior to the year 2000, their surface area in the summer was 7 million square kilometers. Last summer, it was less than 2 million square kilometers, which shattered the previous record set in 2012 when it was 4 million. According to climate experts, there's a high and undeniable acceleration in this phenomenon, and it is conceivable that in less than five years, complete melting will have taken place so that we could reach the North Pole in and a boat. And we do get a message saying that the ice caps are melting, so the climate change is seriously starting to take effect. And hopefully we do, uh, this is a mod that I am playing. I kind of modded a couple of things. Um, so hopefully we do still get the COP conference um, in the future. Um, let's, so what we're, what we're going to do is that we're going to lower the company tax at the same time that we increase the financial transaction tax. We're going to lower the company tax to get that to at least 25%. 
Um, we're going to get a lot of economic growth off of the company tax. And then to kind of counterbalance that growth, um, we're going to be increasing the financial transaction tax. The financial transaction tax, we could get up to about 1% to 2%. And that would net us at least from, I think, what, what, what I was seeing um, we'll actually see how much it gets us. I would say we could get a, easily um, $300 billion off of the financial transaction tax once we get it to that number. So um, I think we can we can make it work. Um, we can get our uh, growth rate up. We can start lowering some taxes and as well as increasing some taxes to start making some more money. And that is, um, I'm going to go ahead and start the process of this and I'm going to, uh, give you guys a rundown of what happens next. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and do a little time skip here. You, um, you're probably going to see a big time skip or a small one, depending on what happens. And I'll see you guys there. All right. It is July 2nd, 2023. And then we have some big news to reveal right here. So we have the Brazilian competitiveness act. Um, basically it was a change to our uh, company taxes, our, to our industrial pollution taxes, to our wealth taxes, to our pornography industry tax, um, as well uh, to our, I believe, it was also, oh yeah, uh, we also, uh, I believe, lowered, no, we didn't lower the, uh, the petroleum tax, but I do plan on uh, lowering this because this is actually the highest per liter I have seen uh, in any game uh, that I have played. Um, so uh, for my Brazilians out there, what are your fuel taxes like? What is it like to live in Brazil? And uh, are the taxes really this high? Uh, go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. Um, so essentially, we did lower our deficit to 5.89%. So that means we did fetch about another um, 70 billion, nearly $100 billion uh, to our... Uh, uh, to our uh, revenue. Um, so let's go ahead and look. We do make, wow, $241 billion off of our nationalized sectors. A lot of this, most of this is actually coming from our, uh, from our energy sector. So the entire energy sector of uh, the Federative Republic is nationalized. So um, we could actually sell it, um, sell a lot of those sectors and get a crap ton of money from the sell-off. So if, if we actually come over here, if I wanted to come over to my, no, not my nuclear industry, if I wanted to sell my fossil industry, so we could make 50 billion reals or hey, Um So let's go ahead and uh, come over here. No, what is our most? Oh, it's hydraulic. It's gonna be hydraulic, yeah. Um, let's go over here. We could actually sell the sector for 200, 197 billion hay ice or 282 billion if we totally privatize the entire sector. Um, however, we're not going to do that yet unless we are in a super, super dire situation. Um, and even then, I feel like it would be a bad idea. The vote was held and the reform was adopted. All right, so the uh, Competitiveness Act has been passed. However, we do. We do have uh, news that we have just incurred 100 billion, 180 billion hay ice worth, worth of debt. So that um, is not good. Um, you know, a pretty moderate amount of debt that we're getting right now. However, we don't want to be increasing the amount of debt that we are getting from uh, anywhere. So let's go ahead and look. Um, so we actually owe um, ourselves uh, uh, what is that? Seven trillion hay ice uh, worth of debt. We are paying 332 billion hay ice um, on the interest. We do have 50 years to pay off that interest. However, it is um, not too good. <laughs> and even now, I'm just noticing that we owe the World Bank 119 billion dollars. Now, what happened um, for us to? Um, have gotten that amount of debt uh, again for my Brazilian friends out there. Go ahead and tell me why um, uh, Brazil uh, got this amount of debt uh, in the first place. Let's go ahead and look at our credit ratings right now We have a, a double beat from grumpies a single a from harshness and rules We have a double B from quiche ratings and then a single a from Qigong so 
Um, we're going to go ahead and try to get those up at least into the A's. Um, we, we definitely could start getting some AAA ratings um, here soon because I'm really good about getting some AAA ratings um, all throughout the sectors except for Xiong. However, I do believe that because of my nationalized energy sector, we're probably going to be able to get an easier time, have an easier time getting a AAA rating from Qigong. So really right now, we're going to go ahead and start increasing the wealth tax. So we actually can get a lot of money from the wealth tax. So we're going to get about another $40 billion worth of of revenue from the wealth tax and uh, this actually does scare off a lot of your cabinet members especially if you're in a more corrupt country it does kind of suck however um, I do enjoy um, increasing it because it actually does help um, in terms of revenue especially in the short term and we're also going to continue to increase the tax on industrial pollution we're going to get that up to about one to two percent um, the higher we can get it the more revenue we can get um, at the cost of some economic growth however because we are in a still developing country i also just went through um, while you we were gone and gave us a, a good amount of subsidies or out to the industrial sector and then soon enough we're going to do the same thing to the services sector as well um, especially essentially what we're going to do is we're going to start concentrating on economic growth we're going to start giving subsidies out exonerations if we need to and then um, we're going to start increasing some of the taxes in order to alleviate the amount of growth we're going to be getting therefore offsetting the amount of inflation that we're going to be getting at the same time so it's kind of like a mix and match. You got to make, got to be careful. You know, whenever you're concentrating on economic growth, you got to think about what it else will be affected by that economic growth. So you got economic growth. You got to think about inflation at the same time. So to avoid prices going up, to make sure that everything's going fine, um, I do concentrate on increasing some taxes to alleviate that growth. So whenever that doesn't work, that's whenever you need to start going in and you need to start lowering prices. You need to start lowering electricity prices. You need to start lowering food prices. You need to start lowering um, maybe even fuel prices at that point. Um, start alleviating some of the other taxes as well. So one of them could be the petroleum and energy product tax. If that doesn't work, then you know you can go in and then directly say, okay, hey, the fuel sector needs to lower their prices, so go ahead and start lowering these fuel prices to help consumers out um, at the pump. So um, it, it, it's, it's kind of like a really interesting way that you can um, play this game. Um, that's why I really like it. That's why I like to uh, just... That's why I play this game so much on my channel because there's a lot of replayability and especially in recent editions there is a lot of replayability to it we have strong suspicions that this organization is preparing to carry out an attack in the next few hours we've also identified their main organizer we are waiting for the green light to proceed with an arrest so it looks like that the brazilian indian alliance has issued a threat of attack and we need to go ahead and stop this from happening. Let's go over to terrorists. Let's go over to Br uh, Brazilian Indian Alliance, and let's go in. What happened to the uh, um, What happened to the Jihadist Caliphate? That's a, that's interesting. They actually don't show up anymore. I guess they disappeared. Um, so under surveillance, eight sushi ordered explosive devices and browsed and chatted on sites classified as terrorists. Let's go ahead and proceed with an arrest on this uh, fellow and uh, see what turns up um, hopefully we do um, we are able to stop that attack from happening sometimes you actually end up seeing that and then you arrest them and then it's like oh hey we didn't find anything and then the attack proceeds anyway um, perfection of fragrant fabric um, the textile fibers are woven and perfumed with perfumed fibers molecules of perfume are uh, trapped in these fibers and are liberated from their capsules by a radio wave controlled by a man manual remote the user can thus change the odor of his clothing to the taste of his cravings. Let's go ahead and accept that patent offer, and we will start patenting that uh, service for ourselves, and we'll make some money off of it. 
Uh, Brazilian agent. One of my men succeeded in infiltrating. Yeah, let's go ahead and infiltrate and take down the organization while they're at their weakest. And let's go to the next day, see how it got, turns out in neutralization of the leader of the, of the organization. Um, this is the head of organizations confirmed by evidence taken from his computer. Um, and he was preparing to coordinate an attack. So we just stopped a terrorist attack from happening. Good job to our security services, even though they have zero funding to agent training. Um, they got to be even stupider than our actual agents themselves. Um, so that's interesting. <laughs> um, let's go over to taxation and look. And so our uh, company tax is 32%. So we are definitely seeing some economic growth right now. You can actually see our stock rate is going up. Um, and we actually have a meeting coming with the United States. We're going to negotiate an economic contract with the United States as we are increasing our industrial pollution tax. Again, we're going to start getting that economic growth. We're going to negotiate a pretty sizable automobile contract with the United States while also, again, thinking about that growth that we're going to be getting from it. Uh, bomb diffused in uh, Belem train station. One of our minesweeping teams successfully succeeded in defusing a bomb in a train compartment. The alarm went off at the same time that the security agent there was intrigued by a plastic bag concealed under a seat. According to our specialist, a particular device would suggest the terrorist group the BIA as the per perpetrator of this attack. Um, so we do have a uh, meeting on 722-23 with President of the United States, Joe Biden. Let's go ahead and offer him a coffee. No thanks. And his ulcer can't take it champagne he'd be a lot he'd be happy to try that i'll try that with someone else screw you screw you um let's go ahead and just uh negotiate a sales contract with the president of the united states automobile and what can we get for mr biden so we have four hundred eighty-eight thousand. let's go ahead and increase this price to 184,000, just above their purchase price and 137 so we're going to do 172. We're going to do 172. 154 could actually be fair. We're actually going to do 160, at least above 160. We're going to call this the Sao Paulo Agreement. And we're going to sell them some bauxite as well. See how much we can make off of bauxite. Um, what about building? Well, actually, no. Building, housing, and roadway. Can we, how much can we make off of that? We can get this around maybe 120 billion hay ice. Um, and they accepted it. So that was both sale agreements. So 80 billion plus 40 billion. That's about, yeah, about um, just around 119, maybe 121 a billion hay ice and that'll expire in 2028 and then we can cancel the contract if we need to yes oh yeah we can actually we actually got them to commit more to the cop conference um so let's go ahead and start preparing for the economic growth that we're going to be seeing from those contracts um we can actually also i also notice that australia has really good relations with us so we're going to think about negotiating a uh free trade agreement with them in the future and again, we want to uh, negotiate global economic treaties with the United Kingdom uh, as well as the, uh, the United States. The United States is the holy grail that we're looking for here. So a big, big policy decision that we are going to make in this episode is going to be this. We're going to go over to environment and we're going to look area deforested is the plus sign and reforested is the minus sign per year in hectares. We are decimating 1.3 million uh, hectares worth of forests um, in Brazil. So essentially, we are the biggest perpetrator of uh, uh, deforestation in the world. So if you actually look, um, we can actually see we are number one. The number two is the Democratic Republic of the Congo and we actually triple that number that the Democratic Republic of the Congo does in deforestation. So we need to make a change and we need to make a change immediately. So we're gonna go ahead and give the reforestation, afforestation budget half stars in order to stop this uh, disaster from happening. 
So we can actually go ahead and confirm that decision right now. And if we actually come over here and look, we produce 468 megatons worth of global emissions or uh, uh, CO2 emissions in the Federative Republic of Brazil. That is in Brazil alone. 76.5% of that emission comes from the forestry sector, from deforestation, from the destruction of the trees of the Amazon. So that is probably the first major, I think this is the first major policy decision that I have made in the Brazil series, and this is a huge one. A lot of, a lot of uh, previous administrations in Brazil have not made a serious effort in order to same, save the Amazon rainforest in, in uh, the opinion of Antonio Silva. And now we are making a solid effort in order to stop that from happening. We gave it a half budget and we will give it full budget by the next episode. So that is going to be our policy by the end of this series that we will cut this in half or even more by half. And hopefully we will start lowering these emissions by half by, I'm going to say 2020, uh, 2030, maybe even 2028. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens whenever we get to this next COP conference um, in November. And with that, the wealth tax has been passed and we have a resignation by Gloria de Sonanves. The Minister of Labor of the Federative Republic has resigned. Mr. President, I am forced to resign my position. I disagree with the government policy to penalize large fortunes. I don't believe that it is in the best, and it is in, it is in my best inter, or oh oh, the best interest of the country. Goodbye. Not even a hey, give me an option to resign, or can I can I resign? She's not even saying it. She's saying I can't do this because I don't want to be penalized for having a large fortune. So let's go ahead and look at her uh, cr uh, corruption record. So she actually has a 11 as a moral character rating. She does have some sort of interest in order to say, okay, I have a large fortune. We don't know how much money she's making in the background, but maybe maybe that, 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 uh, that ranking is wrong. So very interesting to see that our Minister of Labor has resigned because of our increase in the wealth tax. So let's go ahead and appoint a new one. We're going to go ahead and find um, a non-corrupt character. So let's go ahead and look. So very nice. And proud about a 33. So we're going to do Roy Luis. We'll go ahead and appoint him with a 60% approval rating. Let's go ahead and congratulate our vice presidents. See if we can get his approval rating up. It is now at 34%. Um, I don't know how you can get his approval rating up just by, you know, policy decisions. Our infiltrated, infiltrated agent was spotted in a murder by the Chinese Mafia. Uh, wow, unfortunately, fortunately, fortunately, that sucks. Um, we are making some progress in our deficit. We are, you know, kind of starting to get it under 5.5%. Um, it is at least under 6 so starting to make some work um, on uh, getting it under to, uh, toward the half mark that I really, really want to get it to. Um, creation new ambitious space program. Apparently China's going to Mercury. Once you get past a certain point, you won't really get a lot of these approval uh, dislikes. Usually um, this only happens as you're kind of incrementally increasing it. The higher you kind of get it, the more they kind of start saying, okay, yeah, you're, you're making a lot of sense with these policies. So they kind of start to support you a little more. So yeah, like, like I have a hard time, you know, getting industrial pollution up like 0.2% at the beginning, but then now I'm increasing it um, by about like 0.3% or 0.02% at the beginning. But then now I'm able to increase it uh, incrementally now by the 10th of a percent. And then and now it allows me to do that. Also notice that these things are 3D. Actually see how it's 3D. See that? That is cool. Yo, I like this. Um, anyway, so this is industrial pollution. We'll get about $17 billion off of that. Can we actually get it a little more? Um, no, so we're gonna go ahead and do 0.5%. And highway tolls, 
uh, wow, we actually barely make anything off the highway tolls. Um, only $45 million? I guess that's... Do we not have a highway system in Brazil? We do not. We're gonna have to invest some money into that because that's actually a national security issue. That is a major national security issue. Uh, having highways in your country actually does benefit you because it actually allows your troops to move across your territory a lot faster than you're able to. So we can actually make a highway network along the coastline, but we're going to have to build at least one or two highways that will be able to come through um, up and down throughout the central countryside. Um, but we will make an effort to start connecting. I could actually promise maybe about a trillion dollars in spending uh, just by connecting all of these cities. So what we want to do is that we're going to connect Brasilia all the way down over to Sao Paulo, um, as well as um, uh, just a lot of the lower country. Um, that would be very beneficial economically. That would give us a lot of economic growth. Um, and we'll see what happens. It's begun. World leaders are beginning to arrive at the United Nations Framework Convention of Climate Change, the UNFCCC, which will start in the next few hours. As in previous years, they are renewing their pledge for success and have high hopes in the new legislation, which could bring their neighbors to the table. The fact is that negotiations have already begun well in advance of the summit, whether with UN emissaries or between heads of state, and the future of CO2 emissions for each country are already forecast. Moreover, other resolutions are expected to be passed at the same time, especially the Green Fund for the Climate, intended to help developing countries in their energy transition. All right, so we have the COP conference, COP28, goals for reducing CO2 emissions. I believe that Brazil does not count for the... Uh, so we actually have two different things whenever you're a developed country and whenever you're a non-developed country. So in developed countries, you actually have the green fund in which how much you want to allocate to the green fund along with other developed countries. And that money actually goes out to a lot of the underdeveloped countries to help them transition to greener energy. So with Brazil, we are considered a developing country in which we still, you know, get economic aid and everything like that. So we do not have to deal with that. So the only thing we have to deal with is the goals for reducing CO2 emissions. You are now encouraged to review and we hope improve your own national commitments. I remind you that according to the Paris Accord states efforts, um, in the fight against global warming are now reflected by reporting and updating their nationally determined contributions or NDCs. Um, and these contributions establish these objectives for CO2 emissions in most cases up to 2030 and also to your carbon neutrality is reached. So we have the uh, objectives for CO2 emissions in 2030 as well as what year our nation will hit carbon neutrality. Uh, meaning that the country has a zero sum of emissions and no longer contributes to global warming. So we are going to look at this. So the Brazilian objective for CO2 emissions in megatons by 2030 is going to be that we are going to hit 1,000 megatons worth of uh, uh, CO2 emissions by 2030. So that is going to be our effort. And we're once we really start to get our economy on track, we're really going to be able to invest a lot of money into, you know, emissions at the source and uh, 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 CO2 capture technology. And we will be able to make that uh, objective. And then carbon neutrality will not be reached by 2060. It is going to be reached by 2050. As we start to invest more, I want to get that at least down to 2045, maybe even 2040, um, to really, really kind of ramp up our efforts. So um, I do believe that this is a very realistic uh, scenario. This is very realistic. And if we do invest a ton of money into CO2 capture technology, we will be able to make these objectives. Let's go ahead and confirm that. And then we have a country at risk. So we're gonna go ahead and stop the game for right now. And we're gonna look at our economy real quick. So while you guys were um, watching the beautiful transition from whenever I talked last all the way up to COP28, 
Um, essentially what happened is that we did hit a little bit of a slump, our growth really slowed down because of the amount of times that I was increasing those taxes. And essentially what we saw is that my growth went down to about 0.7%. Um, so we actually are kind of rebounding in our growth when he actually um, the way that we kind of reacted to that is that we signed another uh, trade agreement with Australia and I believe also we are now in a position yes we are um, we are now in a position by the next episode we will start sending out a global economic treaty treaties with uh, the United Kingdom as well as Australia um, in order to uh, start the process of getting of upgrading our uh, free trade agreement. So we're going to be able to do that in the next episode. Um, I want to go ahead and leave off this episode with COP28. Um, but, you know, our, our, we're, we're starting to cut our deficit down. We're really starting to keep it under 6%. If we're getting it under 6%, that is good. Our grumpies rating actually went to about a C. But now it is at a single B, and our harshness rules is an A, our quiche ratings is a double B, and our Qigong is a single A. But we did actually, whenever I, I went up to about nearly 7% with this deficit right here because of my growth rate going down, and that actually brought our Grumpy's rating all the way down to about a C. But we have raised it enough to about a single B which is really, really good. Guys, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel. If you are new, you guys want to see more content like this, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss anything whenever I do make it on the channel. Sorry for this uh, uh, lapse in the amount of time that it did make me to make this episode. Um, just for context, um, my dad got a major surgery um, earlier this month, and that is why you have seen me post a little less. I've also been in the process of moving. Um, just a lot of life changes that have been going on right now. However, things are really starting to slow down to a point to where I can start to concentrate more on YouTube and I do want to start doing that more. So expect more content out of me in the coming weeks, especially within the next week or two. Um, so I'm going to, you know, make this episode. I'm going to try to hit episode four very, very soon, at least by this week. So that way you'll have something to watch next week. So that is really what the schedule is supposed to be. I want to get these things out weekly. It's just that, you know, life is having other plans for me right now. So I do apologize for you guys. I really hope this episode takes off because the last couple of episodes have been pretty popular. You know, they've been getting several thousand, couple thousand views, about 2000 views each episode. So I'm glad you guys are liking these episodes. Hopefully this one does the same amount in viewership terms. So go ahead and share this video. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you guys want to see more uh, Federative Republic of Brazil, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching this with me, and take care.